please do. You don't have to. I'll read it out anyway. John chapter 1, <clears throat> starting at verse 14 to 18. The Word became flesh. The Word being Jesus. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testifies concerning him. He cries out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me, because he was before me. From the fullness of his grace we have all received one blessing after another. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth comes through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. But the God, the one and only, who is at the Father's side, has made him known. Just want to read that verse, the last verse. No one has ever seen God. But God, the one and only, i.e. Jesus, who is at the Father's side, he has made him known. The Word became flesh. May God add his blessings to the reading of his Word. I don't know if you have noticed that Christian holidays or Christian events are always accompanied by food, right? Good Friday and Easter Sunday, you have hot cross buns, chocolate, Easter bunny. Yes, uh, some do Lent, you know, give up chocolate, but they make up for it by having the Advent calendars, chocolate. Harvest time, some churches have harvest meal. Um, and there is, of course, Christmas, mince pies. Mulled wine, turkey, Christmas pudding, you name it. Food is good, and we need food for sustenance. But, but, what if we were to strip Christmas of all the traditions, all the good foods that we, are, we, we, that we love and are used to? What would Christmas look like? I'm not trying to be Scrooge or the Grinch, and I'm not trying to ruin your Christmas. But what if, imagine for one minute with me, what if we didn't have any of the Christmassy things? No Christmas tree, no turkey, no carols, no Christmas presents, no delicious Christmas lunch waiting for us. I wonder what our Christmas will be like. Will it still be a joyous celebration? Will it still feel Christmassy? I hope so. I hope we'll still have a great Christmas, because at the heart of Christmas is Jesus Christ. Christ. Jesus Christ is the center of Christmas. He is the reason Christmas exists. I don't know if you've seen the John Lewis advert for 2023. Uh, basically, John Lewis adverts can, wants to convince you that Christmas is all about the perfect tree and the perfect gift. You know, like a, uh, what is it, like a giant eating plant. Marks and Spencer's, again, the Christmas tagline was this, that do, sorry, Christmas, this Christmas, do only what you love. You, you know, if I, what I, love, I just want to rest, I just want to go to bed. <laughs> Again, please don't mishear me. All these things are wonderful things. Christmas tree and presents are great, but often the focus can be just on these things. Wonderful as they may be. In our Heavenly Father, is a great giver, a great, wonderful giver, gift giver. All these good things are from him. And at Christmas time, we celebrate his greatest gift to us, humanity, his son, Jesus Christ. The one he loves, the one he delights in, his son, Jesus Christ. In the previous verses in John 1, we are told that Jesus is the word, he is God's word. In other words, he is the agent through whom God created the world and everything in it, seen and unseen. Powers and authorities and dominions all were created through the word Jesus Christ. Jesus has no beginning or end. He has always been. Jesus has always been with his Father. John 1.18, the one who is at the Father's side. Jesus is God himself. And the Bible tells us that the world was created by Jesus for Jesus. That you and I were created by Jesus for Jesus. You know, sometimes you look at, I don't know, look at an iPad or, a, you know, it says made by Apple or made by Samsung or whatever. You know, I always think if we had a tagline, it would be something like made by Jesus or made by God, created by God. And some, some 
wise person said this, that our hearts are restless until they find their rest in Jesus. Imagine you get a new fancy iPad or whatever, tablets or new watch or whatever. You have wanted it for a long time, but here's the question. How long will that new fancy iPad last you? A year? Two years? And then they'll launch a new one. So if you've got an iPad, I don't know, 10, they'll launch a new one next year, an iPad 11. Three months, six months, a year, two years max, and then it's old and slow, there's a new one out. Some time ago, I, was re I read in the news, uh, it was reported that Marcus Pe Person, the 36-year-old then, the 36-year-old founder of Minecraft, you know Minecraft, uh, a little video game, this, our kids love Minecraft, uh, who founded the Minecraft, he sold the company, the Minecraft, for $2.5 billion. That's a lot of money, a few years ago. And following the sale, uh, he tweeted, he purchased a 70 million mansion and spent his days living the dream with lavish parties, high-end vacation and world travel and making friends with famous celebrities. At the peak of his success, when those looking at his life from outside thought he was living the dream, this is what he tweeted. This is not people reporting about him, this is what he said on social media. He said this, the problem, with getting, the problem with getting everything is you run out of reasons to keep trying. Hanging out with a bunch of friends and parting with famous people, able to do whatever I want, have, and I have never felt more isolated. Fascinating, I, I find. And particularly coming from somebody who's made it, who's got everything in life, money, fame, friends, and yet, for some reason, he tweeted, in his own words, feels isolated, restless. Our hearts are restless until they find the rest in Jesus. We are created by him and for him. He alone can bring us hope and fulfill our deepest desires and our longings. And the good news of Christmas is precisely this, like we read in our Bible passage later, uh, before, earlier. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Rather than us seeking God, First, he came looking, seeking for us, reached down to us. Jesus Christ, the one who created everything from the Milky Way galaxy to the tiniest atom and molecules to our intricate DNA, decided to become one himself. Finite, a baby. He became one of us. He took on flesh. Rather than dictating from heaven, he became one of us us flesh and blood now i was thinking the other day he wonder what mary and joseph would have felt like when they were holding little baby jesus here is baby jesus completely completely dependent on mary and joseph for survival and yet at the same time he's the one sustaining the universe crazy isn't it he became one of us so that he so he can understand and know what we go through, understand what we go through, understand our pains, our sorrows, what it means to live in a world that is fractured by war and jealousy and strife and, and, and death and struggle. He became one of us. He doesn't say, come up to me and then we'll sort it out. No, no, he came to us first. The Bible says that we can't reach God. We can't reach God because of our sins. We can't reach God because with our own good works and morality. We're cut off. We deserve punishment. We deserve an eternity away from him. Often I feel like we're, we're like Christmas tree, you know, uh, uh, wonderful, great, lots of baubles and decorations. But come January, you know where it's going. It's cut off from the roots. It is, put it bluntly, it's dead. We are cut off from the source of life. The Bible reminds us that Jesus is the source of life. Jesus is life himself, eternal life. It's him. Jesus is life himself to cut. But the good news is this, Jesus came to us. He came to bring and offer us life. He came to forgive us, to restore us back to God. He came to offer us hope. He came to give us life eternal. And Jesus, I hope, it's not just for Christmas. We need to realize afresh, deep in our hearts, that this event, this wonderful event that we celebrate, God becoming 
a human being is the center of all history. It is the center of the eternal meaning of each of our lives. So friends, Jesus Christ is at the heart of Christmas. He became one of us so that in him and through him we might find forgiveness, hope, and true life. So enjoy Christmas lunch, family, walks, Christmas pudding, presents, Christmas tree. But let's remember that this eternal one, the God who created all things, Jesus Christ, the eternal one, became a baby for you and for me so that we might look to him and find life in him. And maybe it's worth considering, particularly if you're not a Christian, this Christmas season, why do we celebrate Christmas? Why is Christmas so wonderful? That it centers around this little baby Jesus, but like we've been saying, that it's not just about the little baby Jesus. It's the whole Jesus, what he did, what he stood for, and his claims, and his offer. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your son, Jesus Christ. And Father, here in our, in our Bible passage, Father, we read, the word became flesh. Father, we will never fully understand or fathom. And Father, again, in, in John 1, 18, we read that no one has ever seen God. In fact, no one can, because how can, how can human beings, created beings, see someone so powerful and glorious and we are cut off from our sins. Uh, rather than listening to your wise words and life-giving words, Father, we turn away. But Father, thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, that no one has ever seen God, but the only God who is at the Father's side, he has made him known. And Father, this morning, if we want to see God, Father, we look to your son, Jesus Christ. So Father, maybe we're here this morning, whatever our background, whatever circumstances we've been through. Father, help us that this morning would be an opportunity for us to turn to Christ, to find that restoration, that, that restlessness, Father, only your Son, Jesus Christ, can give us that rest. So, Father, we ask you that you would help us to see Jesus Christ, to look to him for life itself. Amen.